So here we're looking at processes of humidification and dehumidification. So for humidification, we need to do this when we're heating to get the humidity up to a range for human comfort. Usually that's relative humidity between about 30 and 60 percent. So if we first consider heating without any humidification, we'll draw out a simple heater. Here's a duct here with air going into it at 5 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 50 percent. We'll throw some heating coils into this duct and heat the air to 25 degrees Celsius. We want to know what that relative humidity is. So I'll show this heating on the psychrometric chart. We'll draw on a line for 5 degrees Celsius and the 50 percent relative humidity at our starting point. So our starting point's at the intersection of these two lines. And simple heating is a horizontal line. So I'll draw this in green We'll go along this line for simple heating, and we go to 25 degrees Celsius. So we'll draw a vertical line at the 25 degrees Celsius. That intersection is our outlet point. And if we look at what the relative humidity is now at that outlet, that's well below 20 percent. That's maybe about 23 percent relative humidity. That's a bit too dry for human comfort. So we need to add some kind of humidification process. So let's look at some systems that are used in furnaces. You might have one of these in a house, if you live in a house. The cheapest one is a drum humidifier. So here's the furnace, and this is the drum humidifier. There's a water pan on the bottom here. Air comes in through this duct into the center of the drum. If you look on the right here, here's that drum. It's like a big cylindrical sponge. Air goes in, diffuses through that sponge um, to the outside, and then proceeds on to the next duct. So the air goes out. Now the sponge rotates about an axis here on the drum, so it's rotating through the pan, so it's always a wet sponge that the, that the air is going through. Similar to that is a disc wheel humidifier. You have this wheel that rotates that consists of many plastic discs, and you also have a water pan that rotates through and the plastic discs wick up the water through it. The air diffuses through those wet plastic discs and pick up humidity as it evaporates. Here is another system called the bypass flow through humidifier. Here you have this um, porous aluminum and water gets sprayed onto this porous aluminum so it gets gets wet on it. We call this aluminum piece a biscuit. I'm not sure why. So you have this aluminum biscuit here. Air comes in through the duct and diffuses through this wet aluminum biscuit. And only the water that's needed is sprayed onto this biscuit so you don't have uh, a pool of water there. Here's a similar technology. This is used in an air handler system. It's called a spray humidifier. Air gets in and misted. So these are all evaporative processes. And we'll draw them on, on the psychrometric chart. So first step is heating and then a humidification process. And it goes up and to the left because it's an evaporative process. 
So there's a little bit of cooling or a little bit of a temperature decrease during the humidification step. So this is having liquid water getting picked up by evaporation from the air. Here's a different type of system. This is a steam injection humidifier. This, is, this would also be used in a large air handler unit. So steam comes from a boiler that you already have for the heating coils, goes through the steam injector, and gets injected out all these little holes into the airstream. Because it's steam, it adds the humidity, but it also adds heat. So if we draw this on that same psychrometric chart, I'll just shift up a bit here. You first have your heating step through the heating coils, and now goes up and to the right for the humidification step. So you're adding heat, so the temperature increases as you add steam. Now on the other hand, we have dehumidification processes. And we typically want to remove water from the air when it's hot and humid outside in the summer. So if we draw this out, I'll draw a duct here, air going into the duct, air coming out. And first there's a cooling coil. And then after that, we'll put in a reheat coil. At the cooling coil, some condensate forms. So we need some kind of catch basin here and a removal process to get rid of the condensate. So we'll label points 1, 2, and 3 on here and draw this on our chart. So as we cool, the temperature lowers to the dew point and then water starts condensing out until you get to point two. Now that's usually too cold, so we reheat that back up to point three. And if you look at point three there, we have a relative humidity of about 60%, and the temperature there is about 22 degrees Celsius. So that's a relatively comfortable condition. 